of August. Uh, so it's not until now. So apologies to Nadab Art, who uh, I guess got the question in just a little late last month. Uh, question for Dave, assuming please hold is happening this month and that I make it in time. Well, you didn't, but you made it in time for this month. Uh, hi, Dave. My question is about Archbishop Posey. Did you consciously decide not to include him in the double page spread in issue 300? And yes, uh, I don't remember consciously deciding that, but I definitely went through um, all 300 issues when I was doing the double page, double page spread and um, just going character by character. Obviously, I don't have an encyclopedic memory of all of them, and each character that I came across going, is this a major enough character that they should be in the two-page spread? And is there a reason, uh, apart from that, a contextual reason, that they shouldn't be in the two-page spread? I ask because you said the reason Rick isn't there is that he's one of the most devout monotheists in the story. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, I couldn't help but notice some similarities between the two characters. They were both devout in their respective faiths. Uh, they were both martyred, though maybe they killed Posey for simply stepping out of line. Uh, I'll interrupt at that point and go, well, that's really why they do that. I mean, uh, uh, I think most, I think you'll find that uh, most martyrdoms in, in the history of, uh, of the Christian church uh, was, it, was a matter of, of interpretation between um, what the martyr thought was their duty um, to Christ and to God and to Christianity and what the person who, uh, who killed them thought and for those people it was always they were simply simply stepping out of line uh, your first loyalty is to the roman empire uh, roman emperor um your your um, loyalty is to whoever is the uh local bully boy who uh who is dominating uh any christians at the time uh if you don't understand who your first loyalty is to then yes we're we're going to kill you or uh, at least make things very very unpleasant for you uh and they were both not in the spread in number 300. put another way if cerebus had a thought bubble of posy with a question mark instead of rick as he jumped into the light would he have had a similar reaction to his absence uh, and then Nadab adds in parentheses, uh, maybe not since Cerebus might associate Rick with his faith in God and Posey with his faith in Terum. And I would uh, refine that even further, uh, that Cerebus really went from uh, his faith in Terum to... Uh, faith in God, uh, not at Rick's behest, but because of what uh, Rick was saying uh, about, uh, you know, Terum is actually God. You're, 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 you're giving him the wrong name. And uh, Cerebus is Terum, you know, as we uh, remember from uh, uh, church, church and State, uh, is definitely a very northern barbarian um, take on Terra, uh, far closer to uh, Odin or somebody like that than to God. And uh, so there would definitely have been a schism between um, Cerebus, the northern barbarian who believed in the northern barbarian Terra and the Cerebus who then came to believe in God, and um, Posey, who to Cerebus would have been one of those strange people whose first loyalty is to the church, to uh, uh, the Western church, um, in, in the case of Posey, uh, was, 
was Posey the uh, Western Church or the Eastern Church? I know he was sort of assigned to uh, indoctrinate Cerebus into uh, into how you are a good pope, but I can't remember if it, uh, he was sent by the, the Western Church to do that or he was uh, delegated by the Western Church as an Eastern Church member. I want to say Eastern Church, but let me grab the phone book. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll keep talking while you do that. How about that? Okay. Uh, All right. Um, so yeah, the 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 uh, the sort the sort of uh, Odin style um, Terum monotheism would uh, would have definitely not have had much to do with a um, um, somewhat highly placed in the. Western or Eastern Church hierarchy, uh, as as Posey was, um, so um, would he have had a similar reaction to his absence? Uh, probably not. Um, similar, similar but different. Definitely not identical. Um, Service's reaction to Rick not being there would have been a stronger reaction than uh, uh, to Posey uh, not being there. Uh, there's also the fact that in uh, number 160, Swentius Pose said Posey, quote, died happily and at peace, unquote. Uh, at peace with God, perhaps. And uh, yes, I mean, that's, um, for a monotheist, that's really the... Uh, the only genuine peace is uh, is peace with God, and um, I, I, it seems obvious to me that it's very limited uh, limited creatures with limited perceptions and limited understanding. Um, not everybody who thinks that they're at peace with God is actually uh, at peace with God. Um, and we don't really know what the criteria is or what the criteria are. The criterion is what the criteria are for being uh, at peace with God, um, which sort of leads over in the direction of, uh, of Enoch. Um, Saint Enoch in, uh, in the Christian church and... Um, Enoch, um, one of the uh, patriarchs of, uh, of uh, the Jewish religion, of the Hebrew people, uh, dating all the way back to, uh, to uh, Genesis number five, and as the, as the first and possibly the only um, God, YHWH, dichotomist, uh, in my faith, uh, I infer from the end of uh, Genesis four, um, uh, the last the last verse, and to Sheth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Y H W H. So uh, Sheth was uh, was the son that Adam got um, after uh, Cain, Cain murdered Abel. So it, it's significant to me that uh, then began men to call upon uh, the name of the YHWH doesn't occur until that point. And then uh, chapter five uh, begins the, uh, <laughs> the genealogy that usually knocks everybody out of the Torah uh, right away, where they go, uh, I just can't read this anymore. Um, the This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Uh, it, it seems significant to me that uh, if you follow the, the genealogy, it says, uh, you know, and Adam lived 130 years and begat a son, begat 
in his own likeness after his image and called his name Sheth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Sheth were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. That's the template of, uh, of the genealogy. And uh, when, uh, uh, when you start bringing down the numbers in chapter 5, uh, Adam procreates, uh, creates his um, eldest son, uh, Sheth, uh, at age 130. Uh, Sheth begets Enos uh, at the age of 90. Um, Enos begets Canaan at the age of 70. Uh, Canaan begets Mahalalel at the age of 65. You can see the pattern, it's going down. They're, they're procreating earlier and earlier and earlier until Jared, who doesn't procreate until he's 162. And he procreates Enoch. So you have the Enos, Enoch di dichotomy, So, which is really is significant. And you, I, you'll see why I'm tying all of this into what we're talking about, the, uh, the peace with God. Uh, and all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Uh, that's the, the flat inflection of, of that passage. I think it's a response to the Enos that uh, was at the point where men became, began to call upon the name of the YHWH. And what it's saying is, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. It's like, this was a... Uh, uh, my inference is that uh, Enoch was a God YHWH dichotomist and was like me, the one, uh, someone who said, um, I'll pick God. Like, I've, I'm following the plot so far, and no, if, uh, if I think these are two different beings, and I pick God instead of YHWH. So, um, this, this, uh, Enoch creates like this whole, uh, whole industry around this, um, exceptionalism in chapter five, where he's the only one who's described as walking with God. And I don't infer that that means that he and God, you know, went for walks together. It meant that everywhere that Enoch walked, he walked with God, uh, not with God and the YHWH, and not with the, uh, the YHWH. I mean, the uh, the mythologies that have sprung up around Enoch, uh, in the early, uh, this is from the New Bible Dictionary, in the earliest tradition, his scientific wisdom is prominent, acquired on journeys through the heavens with angelic guides, and including astronomical, cosmographical, and meteorological lore, as well as the solar calendar used at Qumran. Uh, he was also God's prophet uh, against the fallen angels. Uh, later tradition, 2nd century BC, emphasized his, emphasizes his ethical teaching, and especially his apocalyptic revelations of the course of world history down to the last judgment. And that it, that really brings me to what I consider uh, the bottom line on uh, on the question of uh, peace with God. Uh, we don't know what God's criteria are. We can uh, certainly we have uh, um, churches that have, have sprung up and flourished and uh, entrenched priesthoods who will tell us yes. Very specifically, know, we know exactly what God wants, and we know exactly what God doesn't want. And it's like, well, it, you would have to know 
where everybody's going after they die, you would have to have sort of like a, uh, a checklist. Um, this person went to a glorious reward, and this person went to the infernal depths, and go, okay, well, we know what this person believed, we know what that person believed, so clearly this person walked with God, and this person over here didn't. And I, I, I wish that more monotheists would admit that they don't know that. Uh, you, do, you don't know, uh, first of all, where it is that we go when we die. Second of all, uh, what it is that we do when we get there. And third of all, uh, what, the, what the criteria is. I mean, all of the cartoons of, uh, you know, people going up the escalator to eat with St. Peter, it's like that could be a very apt visual metaphor for what we're all going to go through. Or it could just be a uh, millennia-long misapprehension as, uh, as a depiction. It's like, you know, it, you come to Judgment Day and God says, I never said anything about that. I just said, like, uh, walk with God. If, uh, uh, if you had kept your lives clear of debris and, uh, you know, focused on, on, on prayer, um, my assumption, focused on scripture, another assumption of mine, uh, focused on feeding the poor, another assumption of mine, then you would know what walk with God meant. Um, what, you know, walk with God is what the, what the Muslims are doing, what, you know, is, uh, you know, submitting to, uh, um, to God's will, not uh, figuring out God's will or understanding God's will, just going, uh, I'm taking my hands off the steering wheel and I will let God do the, do the steering for me. Okay, check in. Church and State, Volume 2. Servus is the Pope of the Eastern Church, and Astoria ascends to the, being the Pontiff of the Western, well, what used to be the Western Church, and as long as Servus kills her, he'll become the Pope of the United Churches. But because he goes out the window, that's, you know, that that's where it ends for the rest of the series. So... He was Eastern, and then the other side was the Western. Oh, I knew that. I was just wondering which side Posey was on. I couldn't po remember Posey, if he was... A... Posey is an Eastern. He's Eastern. Okay, that's what it was. He was sort of uh, delegated to the task of... Weishaupt has decided to make this, uh, this little thug the Pope, so uh, go in and do the best you can with uh, uh, turning him into the most uh, Pope-like thug that, uh, that you can come up with. And I know that Posey, at the end of Church and State, Posey disappears. He shows up again in Melmoth where he gets arrested. And then we don't see him again until mothers and daughters during the chess match. And at the at the end of his life, you know, it's uh, he sees service and that's, you know, he, you know, as as Poe says, he died. You know, he died happy and content. And I'm thinking, well, he was whipped to death. I don't think he was that happy, but okay. <laughs> well, that's uh, Poe's also a pagan. I mean, it's one of those uh, for a pagan um, seeing sincere martyrdom. Um, that that would be your reaction. I I I don't know why this guy uh, died happily and at peace. Because I could, I certainly couldn't do that. You know, my whole life revolved around chess. Um, but um, obviously, uh, that's what happened. That that uh, they were they were both observing what happened to uh, to Posey in um, in a spiritual state, which meant that they were they were perceiving, you know, much much deeper levels of what was going on than just uh, this is what's going on. They're, they're beating this guy to death for, uh, for getting out of line. It was, uh, for, for, for uh, Poe, it was, um, this, is, this, is, this is what a bishop is. This is a, this is, this is a really good example of um, what a bishop stands for 
in the larger contextual significance of chess, um, which is which is inexplicable to non bishops, people who are or non hierophants, non uh, people for whom. Uh, a, a way of religious thinking isn't isn't central um, to their existence, and of course the, the the really glaring thing for Cerebus was this is only happening to this guy because of you, because of the choices that you've made. You have to understand that that's there. There are implications to that. You can't say, uh, well, it was because of. Uh, of his own decisions and nothing that Cerebus had anything to do with that this is happening to him. It's like, well, no, by virtue of your existence and your choices and the position that you put yourself into, that led him to this point. Um, it's, it's uh, your, your, your hands aren't clean in the situation. Um, you could maybe make a persuasive argument that they weren't as dirty as they could have been, uh, but that brings us back to Judgment Day again. Of, uh, what does happen to you um, when when you make the kind of choices that you do and do it without realizing that there are uh, major, dire, potentially dire implications for other people? And as we know now, it leads to uh, um, 65 or 70 monthly issues of, well, you know, read, read Sarah's and L with a question mark. There, that's what it gets you. <laughs> okay. 